As I've been making Steam Deck videos, one critical component continues to highlight itself. The Steam Deck intends to run games at or above 30 FPS. Reading through the subreddit, it does seem like most people think that this is a reasonable limit. But <laughs> did I miss something here, guys? It's the 21st century. Isn't 30 FPS gaming dead? Well, let's talk about it. Hey guys, Turk here. I hope you're having a great one. I've been gaming ever since I was but a wee little Turk. I've played on many different systems, from the Commodore 64 all the way up to the latest PlayStation 5. For the better part of my life, I have been blessed to be a member of the PC Master Race. You'll regularly find me with higher frame rates and detail settings in most games. But lately, there's been a bit of a renaissance in the gaming industry. Many developers are pivoting into new genres, smaller developers are leaning into the nostalgia vibe, and at the same time, plenty of studios are striving for the best looking and best performing games. And with a broad spectrum of games comes a wide range of platforms. Obviously, the PC has been evolving for the past several decades. Still, consoles have continued to mature and modernize their own platforms. But we're also seeing the immersion of mobile gaming as well as handheld PC platforms starting to fill the gaps in the market. Devices like the Aeoneo, the Steam Deck, and the Analog Pocket are beginning to blur the field in a way that showcases just how far electronics technology has come. But with that all said, one aspect of gaming is trudging onward and starting to dwarf traditional approaches, which is of course higher frame rate gaming. Many generations of console leverage the 30fps standard in order to maintain consistent performance, while others tune up their games to 60fps for a more fluid experience. As technology has improved, there's been a bit of a tug of war going on with which frame rate is best for gamers. As graphics technology improves, the frame rate starts to dip. As hardware advances, we see that frame rate increase, and it just goes back and forth. But lately, it seems that 60 FPS is becoming the standard now. So, is 30 FPS dead? Let's get to it. Now, before we get to the meat of the video, I want to highlight some of the limitations of what you're going to be seeing here on the screen. Now, I'm rendering this video at 60 FPS, which will bias the visual quality of the 30 FPS gameplay that I'm going to be showing. However, I have locked the performance for each of their games to their respective V-Sync threshold, so hopefully this minimizes any external artifacts of the render, which, fingers crossed, translates into an accurate comparison of the actual footage. 30 FPS is a typical video frame rate for media consumption with YouTube, Twitch, and all sorts of web media. Even most TV programs are recorded at 30 or even 24 frames per second, which presents a more cinematic feel to the TV screen. And when we're gaming, sometimes that frame rate is precisely what we're going for. So here are three reasons why 30 FPS gaming isn't dead. So the primary benefit of 30 FPS is, of course, the game's age. As a fan of some types of retro gaming, it feels weird when you start to play that game that you loved as a kid, but it's running at what feels warp speed because of that increased frame rate. With the increased horsepower of modern hardware, most retro gaming fans actually hunt down native consoles in order to get the purest feeling of the game they want to play. Some developers even go as far as engineering the feel of these games through either software workarounds or hardware tricks to replicate how it would have worked when running on a modern platform. Though the reason seems counterintuitive, 30 FPS just makes sense when the game you're trying to play was meant to be played at 30 FPS. In a similar vein as the game's age, many styles of games are preferred to play at a slower frame rate. When graphic fidelity is critical for conveying a game's story, slowing things down just a bit can actually help enhance the immersion of the experience. Take for example this clip of Shadow of the Tomb Raider. With a strong emphasis on the cinematics here in the game's environment with the shadows, the lighting, and the different textures on the scene, playing the game at 30 FPS just feels like a great fit. Even if the game does look smoother at 60 FPS, the overall experience at 30 actually does feel a bit more story-like. Similar can be said about Red Dead Redemption 2. Even though this clip is fast-paced, riding our horse through the environment and mixing it up with the locals it can feel very natural with 30 FPS. The same can be said about practically any of the open world action games that are out there that lean more into the environment as a storytelling tool rather than the gameplay mechanics that might require the faster frame rates. 
The last and the least apparent reason why 30 FPS gaming isn't dead anymore is just that games are so darn demanding. With the GPU shortages of 2020 and 2021, and the latest releases like Cyberpunk hitting our consoles, some gamers have had no other choice than to turn back their settings or turn down their frame rate. Let's take a look at Cyberpunk specifically. This scene where you're intercepting some of the snipers at a parade is incredibly demanding. With the sheer amount of NPCs, lighting effects, motions in the scene, it's, it's just so chaotic here, and 30 FPS is more than acceptable for a good gaming experience. On the other hand, running this same scenario at 60 FPS, there's just so much going on, and in fact, some of the detail actually feels a bit artificial, and gamers might miss some of these different storytelling elements while trudging onto the next objective. So let's take a look at this from a different perspective. Some hardware has to run the game at 30 FPS. Let's talk specifically about the Steam Deck. The system developers intend for 720p 30 FPS to be the performance floor for games on the Steam library, so that performance has been deemed acceptable. By aiming lower than 60 FPS, we can dial back our hardware requirements to such a level that the portability and accessibility of a platform can increase, getting the game into more gamers' hands, which we can't argue about that, that is always a good thing. So why is 30 FPS dead? <laughs> Can I finally get my PC Master Race hat back on now? Honestly, 30 FPS has its benefits, but we're in the 21st century here, people. It's time to start bumping those numbers up and gaming at some real frame rates. First of all, modern games are looking for 60 FPS as a standard. Most monitors that people use run at a minimum of 60 Hz, which can introduce artifacts to the scene when outputting below or above that refresh rate. Heck, just getting the locked 30 FPS captures that we've got on the screen here, it has required a bit of trickery just to get it working right. Another instance of this standard, remakes and remasters of old games. As we mentioned before, old games prefer the lower frame rate, but these new remasters were going towards that newer standard. Looking at Diablo 2 here, the game requires a lot of fine motor control at the higher difficulty levels. By increasing the frame rate from 24 to 60 by the developers, the game feels a lot more responsive and conducive to the gameplay. Reducing response times to the display by even a few milliseconds gives the user enough time to pop a potion and stave off certain death. And a similar angle to 60 FPS being the new standard, first person shooter games are insanely popular these days, and response times are even more critical than they were in the past. Some may say, including myself, that for most FPS or first person shooters, 120 frames per second is actually necessary. For example, the Call of Duty campaign at 30 FPS just looks sluggish. Even when the player directs a lot of the action going on, either through scripted scenarios or through the you know, game mechanics of the AI, the scene is just not as important as reacting to the NPCs that are coming across the screen. Going even a step further with Doom Eternal, the game just feels more sluggish at 30 FPS. Now, I've played this first section of the game so many times in my benchmarks, it's kind of robotic at this point. And when you get right around that 40 FPS barrier, going just below that, the game just feels like it's grinding to a halt, and this is actually preventing the aggressive feel that Marty and Hugo, the game directors for Doom Eternal, were designing for. Lastly, and what I focus here on the channel primarily, is of course gaming hardware. Modern PCs, as well as the latest generations of consoles, we have broken the need for 30 FPS. Judging by our GPU tier list that we made back in March, Mid-tier GPUs from two generations ago can handle 1080p gaming at 60 FPS in almost all of the different titles and high detail settings. So why are we still developing for lower frame rates? Even with Metro Exodus, again, talking about mid-tier GPUs from over four years ago, they managed to hit above 60 FPS and the game still looks fantastic. Even with older cards, medium detail settings aren't that worse off. Heck, they can nearly hit 60 FPS at my gold standard resolution for gaming, 1440p. And of course, with fingers crossed, as we go into 2022 with the lower end GPUs launching, uh, for example, Intel's lineup, uh, Nvidia's got the RTX 3050 supposedly dropping, as well as the 6500 XT from AMD, there's just bound to be more 1080p capable cards that are coming to the market. And with a bit of luck, pricing won't be astronomical. 
And for the handheld market, I think we are just one generation away from 60 FPS being a standard there as well. Again, the Steam Deck is positioned in a way that opens the door for the concept of an excellent gaming mobile experience with AAA games. With just a bit more performance, we'll be there. And with the introduction of upscaling technology like we talked about last week, using a lower resolution render and enlarging it to fit the screen, GPU limitations are becoming a lot less relevant in the limited form factor. Many games are already above this threshold with the latest mobile PC devices, so with one more turn of the crank, I think we'll be there. So is 30 FPS gaming dead? In the current gaming climate, I think 30 FPS gaming is at best a legacy tactic to keep as many people engaged in the market as long as possible. Some games are definitely enjoyable at the frame rate, and if you look at it long enough, your brain starts to normalize itself to the rate. Besides some of those limited use cases though, the industry has come so far that it's time to update our systems, our engines, and our expectations of what performance really is acceptable in gaming. Though 30 FPS does have its place, modern games look and feel better at 60 FPS, and we've got to stop kidding ourselves. And those are my thoughts on 30 FPS gaming. I hope you all have enjoyed this different type of video coming here on the channel. If you'd like to see more content like this, make sure to slam that like button and subscribe to the channel because I've got plenty of other thoughts on gaming and I can't wait to share those with you as well. As always, thank you for watching. Take care, Turk Force.